Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this month's IQ Academy webinar. We've had to make a slight one-off change to the delivery this month and pre-record today's session with Clive Mitchell of the British Geological Survey on data in the palm of your hand, mobile digital and 3D geology. If you have any questions during today's webinar, please send these through on the questions panel to the right of your screen in the usual way, and we'll ensure these are addressed following on from today's session by Clive. A short questionnaire will also be uh, displayed at the end of the webinar today. Please complete this if you do get a chance as it uh, ensures we can continue to keep these webinars relevant to your needs. Our upcoming webinar next month takes a look at a market perspective of the aggregates industry with Andy Sales of BDS Marketing Research. To register or find out more information on this, please visit the events page on the IQ website and the address for that is just on the bottom of the screen now. Our branches are also running a number of events over the coming month. Details are available on the current slide. For further information, please contact your local branch secretaries and their contact details are available on the branches page of the IQ website. As mentioned, the session with Clive today has been pre-recorded, but if you have any questions during the webinar, please feel free to send these through and we will ensure these are addressed after the event. Good afternoon. My name is Clive Mitchell. I am an industrial mineral geologist at the British Geological Survey, BGS, and my talk this afternoon is called Free at the Point of Use, the next generation of BGS online resources. And it's basically about the data and information provided by the British Geological Survey that we think would be helpful in your work. So if you're not familiar with the British Geological Survey, we are the oldest geological survey on the planet. We were established in 1835 and we are the UK's premier source of geoscience information and advice. We're an independent, not-for-profit public sector research organisation, part of the government, and we are funded uh, as well as government funded by external funding. Uh, since the 1st of April, we, are part, we became part of something called UK Research and Innovation, otherwise known as UKRI, and we're still part as an arm's length body of the Natural Environment Research Council. We have 640 staff based mostly in Keyworth, but we have offices in Edinburgh, Wallingford, which is near Oxford, Cardiff, Belfast, and a couple based at the Natural History Museum in London. So here we go. So this is what we're talking about. This is the very first national scale geological map. This is William Smith's 1815 map. So this is over 200 years old. And this is referred to as the map that changed the world. And it came along at a handy time for the UK because this was prior to the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. Before this map came along, it was a bit of a potluck whether you could find resources of limestone, coal, iron, or et cetera, for, for whatever your, your pro industrial processes. This map changed that and became it much more predictable where you could find these resources based on the line work from this map. And as you can see from this photo, this map is pretty humongous. It's eight feet long and six feet wide. It came in 15 panels. This is also available, I would hasten to add, as a reproduction from the BGS, but it's only half the size, and you can get one from a tenant from the BGS. If you go online and Google BGS, you'll find that online. So, as an organization, as I said before, we were started in the mid 1830s, and what you see before you now is a typical field party. This is from the Geological Survey of Scotland in the 1880s, and this is a pretty famous scene. We have some pretty famous geologists here. We have left John Horne on the left and Ben Peach there. And Peach and Horne were famous for sorting out the complicated geology of the Northwest Highlands. As you can see here, in fact, looking at some of these guys, they wouldn't be amiss in the modern day geological survey as beards of Akinpashi. And you can see on the top right here, this is, the, this is where they were ba based in each of them. And these geological maps here are pretty similar to the sort of maps that we still have available today. Modern times, uh, we whiz forward. This is a field geologist, Andrew Finlayson, a few years ago. And now we take out uh, a digital ruggedized uh, tablet. And this is uh, operating a system called Sigma Mobile. Sigma Mobile is for digital data capture. So maps now are born digitally. And no, we no longer use paper maps. And this, this system is um, compatible with ESRI and, uh, and ArcGIS. And it's, if you go onto the BGS website, you can find this. It's free for commercial and non-commercial users. So this scene here is, is uh, Loch Broom, which is just to the east of Ollapool in Northwest Scotland. Now, as I said, the, the most modern uh, British Geological Survey maps are now digital. Um, paper maps we have now are essentially archive and legacy material. 
all of our digital line work is, is updated with things like the tablets and updated on our indigenous databases. And the digital geological map of GB or dig map GB comes in various scales from the most detailed, from the one to 10,000 scale, right up to the national scale, the one to 65 scale. And that the 65 comes in north and south of, of the UK. The, the main primary digital um, map layer that we use is the 50K, the dig map GB50. The one to 50,000 scale is, the, is essentially the bedrock of the geological map. And we have 99% coverage of records. This is one of the products that we license from the BGS. And this product is, ava is available. It integrates with Esri, MapInfo, and other formats. The data that you get comes in themes. So we have the bedrock, which is the main geology, superficial, which is the, is the, the surface material, mass movement, which is mainly landslips, artificial ground, which is essentially um, ground modified by man, and linear features, things like faults, faults and um, coal seams, mineralization, alteration, that sort of thing. We do have a free web map service, but if, you, if you're not familiar with that, we do well, alternatively have something called the Geology of Britain Review, which pulls on the dig map database. So I'll come on to that later. So here we go. This is this is a, a, an image of a classic 1 to 50k geological map. I'm just, just showing you the map of Durham. And as usual, we have all the, the, the paraphernalia down the right hand side and cross sections. And these maps are available. Uh, paper copies are still available to buy and they can be printed on demand if they're no longer available in stock. And you can buy a pop copy from the beaches, as well as the geological memoir, which is essentially the, the explanation booklet with the, with the detailed geology for this particular area. So, uh, as I'm talking about geological resources, where would you start? Um, the first place I would recommend starting when looking for geological resources, digital resources from the BGS, is something called Open Geoscience. This is the BGS Open Data Portal. And if you go onto the Ge Open Geoscience, the first thing you'll see is, is GeoIndex. This is probably the main port of call for professionals, professional geologists and engineers. There are two versions, it's onshore and offshore, and also feeds into desktop and mobile uh, platforms. GeoIndex has a huge variety of databases. It pulls on geology, boreholes, our collections, so this is rock, borehole, uh, fossils, etc. Hazards, so things like earthquakes, landslides, geochemical, so our G-base, our geophysics, uh, our Products like aquifer vulnerability maps, uh, photos, so you can search out uh, photos in our image database, something called Geoscenic, hydrogeology, so uh, uh, location of aquifers, and mineral occurrences, resources, and planning, environmental designations, and surfaces on like digital terrain models. So there's something like 160 databases that this index pulls on. A more simplified version of the BGS data is presented in the Geology of Britain viewer. This is more aimed at the layperson, but it, ha it provides a very handy view of the dig map geology in the UK. And I'll come on to that, I'll show you that later on. We also have something called the BGS Maps Portal. There's no need to buy a physical copy of a map when you can go online and if you search for the BGS Maps Portal, every single map that the BGS has ever produced, over 6,000 maps have been scanned in high resolution and they can be viewed online. I'll show you one in a moment. And finally, I would recommend uh, our apps, in particular, iGeology. iGeology, I'll come into again. We have other maps, iGeology 3D, we have My Soil, and we have My Volcano. So here we go. This is Open Geoscience. This is all free data from the BGS. And it's a free service. We can view maps, we can download data, scans, photos, and other information. It's available under an open government license. And you can see the acknowledgement here if you do use our data. So here we go. This is a, a quick dive into the geo index onshore. And what we're looking at here is Durham. OK, and I'll click on one of the databases. So I've selected borehole scans. Borehole scans I've chosen deliberately because it's probably one of the most used aspects of the geo index. And if I click on one of the boreholes, here we go. I've clicked on a borehole under the University of Durham, and this gives you the details of, of the location, when it was drilled, and, and gives you the grid references. And at the bottom it says scan. I click on scan, it then pulls up a scan of the, the borehole log. I think this is a very, very powerful source of information 
for subsurface geology in the UK, and you can understand why people will go to this because they're giving a lot of detail. This is a view of the BGS Maps portal, and it's the same map that we we're looking at earlier. You can see the inset here. We've got the map of Durham. And in this particular case, we're on the map, the map portal scan. And what I've done here, I've zoomed right in to the sort of like left top left hand side of the map. In fact, I've, I've zoomed right into Durham. It's pretty much similar to the location of Durham University that I was looking at earlier. This is a static image. You can't query this image. So you do have to rely on using um, the explanations and the cross sections to explain what all of the, the, the detail means. But this is a very good uh, way of looking at a geological map without having to spend four to out 12 quid a copy. Next up, we're looking at the Geology of Britain viewer. Now, this is available in four different modes. And at this particular mode, we're looking at surface geology. And if you look at the top left, you can see there are also 3D models, four hole scans, and an earthquake timeline. This map is available in two scales. What we're looking at here is the, the national scale model, the geological information of the UK. And this is the 1 to 625K scale of the geology of the UK. Next up, if I click it, we'll look at, we can zoom right into the Geology of Britain viewer. And this has taken us to the 1 to 50,000 scale. Now, unlike the, the maps portal where that was a static image, this is a dynamic uh, map. This is continually updated from, the, from DigMap GB. So as we improve the geological maps and models of the UK, the Geology of Britain viewer is updated as well. You can click on each of what we call poly the polygons or the areas of different colours on the map, and you can pull up a, a simplified explanation of the geology of that particular point. And if you look at this, the, the box on the top left there, it's, it says it's basically uh, showing you that you can, you can change between superficial, bedrock, and this view is showing bedrock and superficial. So this information here will give you information about the bedrock and the superficial geology. So I, again, you can go to any part of the country and you can change the scale. So I think this is an extremely valuable resource. And I've seen this uh, being used uh, when I've visited quarries, when the, the, the quarry manager is telling me about the geology of their quarry, and they call it the geology of Britain viewer. The information in the summary box comes from something called the lexicon. Now, the lexicon is essentially the Bible of UK geology. This has a, an explanation of every single geological litho lithostratigraphic term used in the UK. So, if you have noticed on that Geology of Britain viewer, it also says at the top, try the beta version. Now, this is the beta version of the Geology of Britain viewer. The difference with this is this incorporates three dimensions. And if you look here, this image shows you what we call the, the bedrock fence diagram of the UK. And it's essentially a series of geological cross sections which have been laid across the UK and then they intersect. And we use this to generate a simple three-dimensional geological model of the UK. So here we go. We've, we've zoomed into the same area that we were looking at before. The difference here is that we're looking at an oblique view of Durham. And the geology is overlaying on something called a digital terrain model. So that basically gives you relief. And you can see, if you look, you can see the, the sort of dark area sort of just to the left of the centre. That's the area uh, with the river, river going round, and we've got Durham Cathedral and Durham Castle. And this is also queryable. The next time I click this button, you'll see that we'll dive underneath the surface. And here we go. What we're looking at here it might be a little bit confusing to start with, but when you get your eye in, you can see at the top, we're looking from the subsurface up to the ground level. So we're underground. And this is showing you a section of that fencework diagram. So we're seeing two cross sections intersecting. And all these solid color lines are the rock strata. You can query each of these. And you can see I've done that. And you can see the explanation. This is pulling a summary from the lexicon. This is giving you the summary information for that information. So this is the idea, really, is that we want to put out more three-dimensional geology of Britain. And in the future, it won't just be a fencework diagram. It will be a solid block of the whole of the UK that you can just take slices. So, here we go. This is iGeology. As I mentioned before, iGeology is one of our apps. Um, iGeology of the, of the four apps that I mentioned is the most popular. It's a free download for both Apple and Android phones. And this gives you free access to virtually all of our current geological maps, so 500 geological maps. 
We're currently on version 5.04. The main uh, difference that the new version has is, is adding citizen science contributions. And I'll come into that in a bit more detail. This is a very powerful um, app. It uses the GPS on your phone. It's a little bit like Google Earth in that you download the viewer as the app. And as you zoom around and zoom into the into the UK, it pulls in the tiles of geological information as you zoom around. So next slide, sl slide shows you Durham. And you can see um, pretty much in the same way as the Geology of Britain viewer, you have the geology of the UK, and you can query these colors in exactly the same way, which this time you just, you just touch on them. And you can see on the left-hand side, you can see, um, bedrock and superficial, but you can also pull up things like boreholes, linear features. You can also overlay the William Smith map on here. You can also, if you create an account like I've done here, where it says Clive BGS, you so, so call, create something called a BGS ID. This enables you, by having an account, this enables you to add your own information. So you can add uh, photographs, field observation, point observations. Um, and as I said, because, because this works a little bit like Google Earth and you pull in the tiles of information for where you're looking at, um, it enables us to examine the database and we can tell where people are looking. Now, if you, if you look back over the records and I, I asked our engineers, our IT engineers, where are people interested? The top uh, locations that people are interested in were London, Birmingham, Manchester. Very quickly realised that essentially people are looking at the geology where they live. And these are all the basically the main urban centers in the UK. If you strip that out, the next thing you find out is that, that people are looking at places like Brighton, Ollapool, Lulworth Cove, Lyme Regis, Sky. This is essentially the locations where geologists go on holiday. So they're not just looking where they live, they think they're looking at the geology about where they go. And being a geologist, you can't leave geology behind. So when you go on holiday, you're always interested in the local lots. I am anyway. I know that's so, so. And here we go. I've, I've queried. You can see on the, on the image at the top, there's a there's a circle. That's where I basically touch the map, and this is bring, bringing up the information, the superficial geology and the bedrock geology of that particular point. And you can scroll down. Obviously, this is a static image, but you can scroll down, and you can click through to the lexicon on the BGS website as well. So I couldn't um, go without mentioning Minerals UK. Now, Minerals UK is the web portal, uh, the minerals web portal for the British Geological Survey. And this has a lot of information, as you can see here, you get an idea, it has uh, maps and statistics, and a lot of, a lot of uh, information, legacy information. So if I just run through quickly, so things like mineral resources, planning documents, policy le and legislation, information on development, sustainable developments, uh, mineral statistics and mineral exploration. And the sort of things that you can get from Minerals UK, for example, is the Directory of Mines and Quarries. This is a pretty decent summary of all the quarries in the UK based on commodity, based on uh, location, based on Mineral Planning Authority area. Its current version is the 2014. Before Christmas, the 2018 edition should be out, so I'll check back. Mineral statistic downloads, we produce three different types. We produce UKMY, which is the UK Minerals Yearbook. European, European uh, stats and world. We're only one of two organizations in the world, as well as the US Geological Survey to produce world mineral statistics. We also have legacy data. MR, MRP is the Mineral Reconnaissance Program. IMAU is the Industrial Mineral Assessment Unit. County maps, planning fact sheets, mineral profiles. These have all been scanned and made available as free downloads. And we have something called the risk list, which is essentially the, the risk to supply of certain economically valuable elements and for example rare earth elements are top of the list because they're 99 percent of them produced in china and there's some uncertainty about future supply of this in, in this particular country and we also have access to the digital map viewer so this is um, looking at all the minerals information on resources plant permissions environmental designations but in a geospatial fashion so that's what we have currently um, available from the British Geological Survey. What I'm going to do now is have a sort of forward look at what we're currently planning to update. And we're just talking about um, legacy materials. So we're continuing to mine the legacy materials, legacy reports, all been scanned, and they'll all be made available via the BGS website. 
we're heavily involved in something called BIM, which is Building Information Modeling. Now, the BGS has been involved, for example, we have a data set called BGS Civils, and this has been used in many UK government funded uh, procurement projects, particularly in construction. And these subsurface data sets are providing uh, a um, uh, underpinning for, for many of these models, which in the past haven't really considered subsurface or the geology in great detail. We're hoping that this is something that will catch on um, and more sectors, more industry sectors will, 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 will integrate three-dimensional model, geological models into their planning work. Crowdsourcing and shared data. Now, I was talking about our geology and our app. There's an element of being able to introduce your own information. We accept data from industry as well, particularly site information, uh, site investigations, boreholes, all data is welcome. And I'll come on to that a bit later. And I think open, open data, like open geoscience is the future. Currently we license a lot of our geological line work. In the future, who knows, maybe this will become free, much more accessible and continually updated. The big question in our mind is if, if this, all of the, our information becomes free, who pays to maintain and develop this? And the question, the question, this question may be answered by the Geospatial Commission. Now, the Geospatial Commission is bringing together all of the big organisations in the UK that have interest in, in, in spatial data. The British Geological Survey, the Ordnance Survey, the Land Registry, the Valuation Office, the Hydrograph Hydrographic Office and the Coal Authority. And they currently have a consultation which ends on the 24th of October, but they are developing a national geospatial strategy. And looking at their, their questions, they, they revolve around things like data licensing, interoperability of, of, of data, so making sure that data can talk to each other, and integration of third. So if we get data from third parties, how do we integrate that into our existing databases? So digital twin, let's explore this uh, concept. So as an organization, we are creating three-dimensional models of the subsurface. So from, from, from models underpinning cities, to models like the fence work diagram, uh, network diagram under, underpinning countries, to who knows, maybe creating um, continent-wide and ultimately planet-wide subsurface models. This is, this, is, this is projecting into the future now. And there is, there's something called one geology, which is a, is a, a planetary-wide sort of like 2D geological map, but we'd like to see that go into 3D. And who knows, maybe we'd see something a little bit like Google Earth, but rather than looking just purely at the surface, look at, look at the subsurface. So Google subsurface or a, a way of, of using that sort of technology to, to enable people to navigate the surface right across the planet would be fantastic. Google apparently aren't really interested at the minute because it can't be monetized. Esri, who produced ArcGIS software, are interested and they're leading the way. And many companies, UK companies like Tarmac, for example, are using this sort of concept of trying to create a sort of Google map for the subsurface and, and for example, things like block, uh, block models of quarries I've seen. So this is maybe the future. And a lot of this modeling will be fueled by the data provided by enhanced sensor networks. The BGS has uh, sensor networks. For example, we have a network of seismometers across the UK, and this is obviously to detect earthquakes. And it's fairly well spread out across the UK. The aim of this sensor network obviously is to pick up uh, seismic activity. The advent of low cost sensors, for example, things like the Raspberry Shake. Now the Raspberry Pi is a low cost mini computer. It can be hooked up to a low cost um, seismometer to create a mini seismometer rather than spending something like £25,000 on a professional seismometer you can spend something in the region of about 300 quid and get a small um, essentially a small uh, seismometer thousands of these seismometers have been sold over the last few years we can envisage a situation where there's a network of these low-cost sensors right across the UK hooked up to the cloud providing data, providing a huge amount of data. This increase in data could enable us to, to look at, for the first time, looking at early warning for things like landslides and, and other earth hazards. And all of this coming together, this sort of models, 
are the, the ability to view the models and the, and, and the, the increase in, in, in real-time data may, will maybe enable us to produce something like a virtual Earth. This, the idea of a digital twin is to create a digital model of the environment, not just in a static version, but a living, breathing model that responds to changes. And it will maybe enable us to visualize environmental impacts before you've actually, maybe say, for example, if you're planning a quarry, before the, the quarry has actually been developed and put in place, maybe you could actually model this using the virtual earth. You could then model the likely impacts on the surrounding um, land prior, during, and after the development. So this brings you on to the next forward look. It's something called we call I'm calling Geological Survey 4.0. Now, you may have heard of, of, of Web 4.0 or Industry 4.0. The idea really is bring, a bringing together of various things that are happening, like the Internet of Things. So the Internet of Things are referring to the, connect, the, the sort of like interconnectivity of devices. So, for example, when your fridge runs out of milk, it automatically adds it to your shopping list and maybe automatically orders it for you, so you don't have to. So it's this sort of idea. And the digital twin we've just spoken about, this virtual copy of the planet enriched with the models and sensor data. The huge amount of data that we generate from these enhanced sensor networks is too much for the human. So we need a way of processing this data. So artificial intelligence with, coupled with machine learning, this is where machines essentially learn as, as they uh, progress, as they ingest more data, they can be trained and they can learn and act like humans and basically improve over time. And maybe they will alert humans uh, when there's a certain threshold of breach for certain things and maybe give us an early warning for an event. And it, it's, it's not impossible to imagine a situation where you get to a point where these processes can actually make their own decisions and they can act independently. So they, they're, they're taking away that sort of the element of, of human interaction. Which brings me on to my last point here in this section. Who needs a geologist? If we have uh, artificial intelligence, the digital twin, and sensor network data being fed in, we could imagine a situation where we have a sensor equipped drone, telemetering data back to a central digital twin hub and providing decisions on subsurface developments in real time. With maybe, I would argue that there will be some human interaction just to ensure that things are managed properly and that things don't go haywire. But this is not a million miles from reality. So this brings me on to what I would call the traditional call to arms. This is give us your data. Many companies have carried out site investigations, borehole drilling over the years, and keeping that data, there is a real risk of physically losing the data. Over, over, over time, the data be, be, be becoming inaccessible. We all, know, we're, we're, we all remember, or some of us remember floppy disks, and trying to access the data on those disks now is a bit of a challenge. And then trying to maintain an archive of data is quite expensive. So what we say is, why not give your data to the BGS? This will save you the time and costs. BGS will archive it. It will then help to improve the understanding of UK geology. And then you will be able to access your data back through the BGS web map portal for free. So what do we want? We want borehole records and materials, site investigation reports, preferably digital in AGS data format, for example. If you're not sure, contact us. And if, who do you contact? Well, if you can't get in contact with the National Geological Record Centre at the BGS, and there's a link here for the contacts. So in conclusion, Geological surveys are changing. You would expect us, and we are actually refocusing the strategy of the BGS literally as we speak. And the news, there's a new strategy in consultation at BGS. And so on. BGS will maintain a national geological coverage of data, extending into the surface, filling in those gaps in, in the framework diagram. I think data in the future will become more free and accessible. Who pays to manage and maintain this session is a question for things like the Geospatial Commission and others. And final point is who will be here in 30 years time? Maybe it won't be me. Maybe we'll just turn it into an AI driven VR webinar. Thank you very much for your attention.
Thanks to all of you who took time out to uh, join us today. As with the previous sessions, we will be making the recording of the webinar and slides available for you all to access. Keep an eye out for an email from us next week with the respective links for those. If you do have a chance, please provide your feedback of today's session on the questionnaire that will be being displayed uh, shortly. Um, thanks again for joining us and don't forget to register for our webinar next month. More information is on the, available on the events page of the IQ website.